Mountain bluebirds are amongst the most beautiful birds in Western Canada. And early each spring, they arrive back in southern Alberta to nest and raise a new family. My name is Rick Andrews. I'm a wildlife conservation filmmaker and a bluebird trail monitor on a working cattle ranch in southwestern Alberta. Although bluebirds are cavity nesters, habitat loss and competition with other birds, such as swallows, chickadees, sparrows and wrens, cause many bluebirds to look for alternate nesting sites, such as these specially constructed nest boxes. These boxes not only provide an effective nesting environment for the bluebirds, but also provide us with an opportunity to peek inside. After a recent snowstorm, it may not look like spring just yet, but it's late April and time to inspect and repair any damaged nest boxes. In another week, the Chinook winds will bring warmer temperatures and help melt the snow. Once this male and female have pair bonded, the female begins collecting grasses to construct their nest. despite the winds not being very cooperative. But persistence pays off, and within the next week, her nest begins to take shape. She will finish by hollowing out a cup, just large enough to allow her to snugly cover her eggs. She will then begin laying at the rate of about one each day until she has laid between four and six eggs. Once she has finished laying, other than short trips outside to feed, she will remain on the nest to incubate her eggs, which will take about another two weeks. Since only the female has a brood patch, she alone will incubate the eggs. But during this time, the male will remain close by to protect their nest, and sometimes help feed her. The eggs will all hatch within a few hours of each other. Chicks hatch blind, featherless and totally helpless and will now be brooded by the female for the next week or so. During this time, the male brings larvae and soft-bodied insects back to the nest for the female to feed to the nestlings. Looking at them now, it's hard to believe that they will be ready to fledge in another three weeks. But they will grow quickly. The female now occasionally helps feed them too. But still only a few days old, the nestlings require a lot of sleep so she waits patiently for them to awake. The nestlings are also still learning to feed, and while they can all open their beaks, unless they can also grip the female's beak, they are unable to eat, so she moves on to the next. Eventually, they will all learn this skill, but until they do, 
some may miss out on a few good meals. As the nestlings begin growing, their increased food demand now requires both adults to feed them on a full-time basis. Their appetite is becoming insatiable, and from dawn until dusk, the parents will now average about three feedings each hour. But once in a while, food delivers itself. And of course, with all this food, housekeeping becomes very important. While they are still very young, the parents may ingest the nestlings' fecal sacs. But as they grow, they are collected and taken to a suitable repository, located somewhere beyond the nest box area. Their body weight is now beginning to increase rapidly, and in the next few days their eyes begin to open, and new dark feather growth becomes more apparent. In another few days, the wing feathers will help determine the sex of the nestlings. Male wing feathers develop as an intense blue, while those of the females will remain more bluish-gray. With their feathers almost fully grown in now, it requires regular preening to ensure they stay in good condition. They are also becoming more active and begin stretching and testing their wings. Given their new growth, and with all this new activity, it's becoming harder for the adults to feed them. Perhaps signaling they may soon be ready to fledge. To encourage them, the parents have now decreased their feedings. A short distance away, the male calls to the nestlings, encouraging them to venture outside. While the female tries coaxing them with food. Eventually, the boldest of the nestlings responds, taking its very first look at the outside world. Then, with a little encouragement from its sibling, leaves the nest for good. One by one, the nestlings leave the nest until there is only one left to fledge. For the first time in its young life, the remaining nestling is now all alone and appears to have some difficulty in knowing how to exit the nest box. The male, however, continues calling, while the female continues to coax it with food. Eventually, driven by hunger and the calls of the adults, the last of the nestlings now fledges. From first to last, it has taken less than two minutes for all four to fledge. By the middle of August, 
All the nest boxes on the ranch are now empty and in need of a little cleaning. It hasn't been a great year, but it hasn't been a bad one either. Because of the collaborative relationship between the ranch owner and the Mountain Bluebird Trails Conservation Society, there are now 39 more bluebirds in the world. And the way I see it, that's not a bad thing.